Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Caroline Dubois. Caroline, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. I'm very good. We're here at your gym, McGuigan's Gym in East London. Looked shit hot, if I'm allowed to say that. It's too late now. On the pads and the, the foam handles earlier. Uh, you're, back, you're on the Bournemouth bill, so back out quite quickly after your last fight. How much are you looking forward to being out in Bournemouth? Very excited. Um, it's a good show. It's a massive show, as you already know. It's selling out. So I'm just so blessed and happy. How nice is it to be on these big shows but to not be the only focal point? You know, you've got Chris Billum Smith, hometown hero in the main event. So you can kind of build your craft, not completely under the radar, but with a little less pressure. Um, definitely. It's nice to have the pressure off me. And um, it's always good. I love it when I fight and um, there's somebody else on the card. So we're sharing that pressure. You know, everything that I'm going through, I know he's going through probably 10 times more. You know, he's fighting for a world title. He's fighting against a very, very, very good opponent. And it's a you know, all or nothing kind of fight for him. So if, you know, I, I just I just look at it as if if he can do it, then I can do it. So it takes the pressure off me and, and it makes it easier for me. Now we talk about taking the pressure off. This might put some on you, but we spoke to Shane earlier and he said he thinks that you're going to be one of the best female boxers on the planet within the next 12 months. How do you feel when you hear a statement like that from your trainer who knows you from a physical perspective better than anyone? It's great. Um, it's the truth. Um, it genuinely is. And it's something that, I'm working towards to make happen. Um, words are cheap and they mean nothing if you know actions and hard work isn't really being put in. And I'm putting in the hard work, I'm making the actions happen, I'm, I'm training hard every day and I'm performing like crazy. So um, I don't see why, how that ain't true. And he says you only spar men now, why, why is that? Because um, there's no females around, no females want um, to come down and it's just hard, it's difficult. Um, but sparring the boys is good. You know, they're, they're stronger, fitter, faster, and it's only going to level you up and make your A game go up. Do you ever get concerned at all that they might take it a bit easier on you than they would against another male boxer? No, 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 no. It's, it's always the other way. You see, they, they come in the ring and they think they're going to take it easy, and then I land the first punch and you see their face change, you see their body language change. <laughs> you know, suddenly they're on pushing me back. So, yeah, there's never any... Um, concerns that they're going to be taken easy. Do you have like a favourite sparring partner or someone that you feel you've learned the most against so far? I mean, all the people that I've been sparring has been good work. Um, there's, there's this one kid, Christian, he's coming through and he's, he's looking to be turning pro and so far I've been very consistent with him um, and he's been so great as coming down and help, helping me out and it's been really, really good work so um, I feel that like we're really bouncing off each other when we're in the ring. It's, it's not like an all-out war, it's a really smart kind of spot. And Shane's talking about the likes of Michaela Mayer, potentially Alicia Baumgardner in the next 12 months. How close do you feel to that level? Talent-wise, you're obviously there, but in terms of getting the stamina up and getting the conditioning to that level? Uh, to be honest, I feel like I'm there already in terms of ability, experience and everything like that. I just feel like, obviously, it's a progress. I, we know what I'm ready, but it's about making you guys know, making you guys start calling for the fight. It's, it's no good if I'm just the one calling for it. It's good if the public is calling for it. And for that to happen, I need to have these fights, have these fights where I'm stepping up slowly, slowly, slowly but when I'm getting in the ring, I'm, I'm dominating. I'm, I'm showing that I'm levels and levels above whoever it is I'm in the ring with. And then that's, that's when you guys know that, okay, she's ready for these Michaela Mayers and these world champions, football world champions, she's ready, you know. She isn't going to get any, she isn't learning anything fighting people that she's knocking over, so it's, it's about making you guys know that I'm ready. Do you have like a number one target or a dream opponent that you'd like to face in the next couple of years? Uh, next couple of years, not particularly, but obviously Michaela May is someone I want to fight by the end of this year, early next year, and that's just being straight on serious. Um, but in terms of achievements and what I want to do. I just want to be a world champion. I want to be a multi-weight world champion and I want to be undisputed. And that's what I'm pushing towards, aiming towards. So whoever's got, got those belts when I'm coming for them, that's who I'll be ready for. How far up in weight do you think you can go? Um, I'm very young right now. I'm 22. Um, I'm, I'm currently going to be campaigning at lightweight, but we've seen it with Terry Harper. She's jumped all the way up to 154. Yeah. I can see myself doing something like that, going all the way up to 154. It's, it would take a while and, and I wouldn't want to just jump. I would want to do it slowly and progressively, like a Canelo, you know, just going through the weights. Um, but yeah, I think 154 is probably the heaviest that I'll go. 
you got someone like Lauren Price, who's just won the British title 147, so a weight lower than that. Yeah. What did you think when you watched that, the first ever female British title? It was good, you know. It's, it's amazing to see the change that's happening in boxing. At first, it was the Olympics, you know, 2012. First time females were fighting in the Olympics. Amazing. And, and now we're seeing it in the pros. There's big, massive changes. All the, all the titles, all the belts are the same. And, and now we've got our first female British champion. So that's really cool. It's really inspiring. And hopefully a good incentive of where boxing's headed. Any thoughts about maybe having a British title fight yourself at lightweight, just as a stepping stone on the way to your greater goals? Um, I'll be game for it. Obviously the world champion belt is, is where I'm heading, but if I can get any minor titles on the side, like a British title, which isn't a minor thing, but it would be amazing. And obviously for that to happen, I'll need a good opponent and someone obviously that will make it a good fight. Now, there's a big female fight taking place this weekend, of course, out in Dublin. Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron, undisputed titles, super lightweight. Um, I heard you doing some of the interviews about this fight earlier, so I'm going to try and gently prize you off the fence and commit to an opinion one way or the other. If you had to put your last pound on it down at the, the bookmakers, I'm sure you don't bet, but if you did, who would you go for? Who would I go for? OK, we got Katie Taylor, who knows how to win. She's been in very tough fights, and obviously, I feel like... It's in Dublin, you're in Ireland, you're fighting the Queen of Ireland. If you, if you have a fight with this girl, and it's, it's competitive, but it can be like, oh, this can go either way. I don't see them giving it to Chantal Cameron. Um, and if it gets to that situation, I definitely would say Katie Taylor will win. I think for Cameron to win, she's got to dominate. She's got to be totally aggressive, full on train moaned. Um, just run through this girl and don't care about what's coming back. Just be so aggressive. You know, a Delphi pursuit. Just keep punching and don't stop. And hopefully go for the knockout. If she can do that, her youth, the natural size advantage, um, her strength, I won't be surprised, man. I feel like I'm just going straight back on that fence. <laughs> but that's, that's all I can say. All right, that's fair enough. Um, your brother Daniel obviously trains here as well. He's been nominated to fight Alexander Usyk um, for the WBA world title. What's it like having kind of goals at the same time, both towards the same sort of areas, world titles, and, and getting to work together? I mean, um, everyone in this gym is aiming for a world title. Um, and it's always good when you're, you're running and training with people that are, that are aiming high. Um, you motivate each other, you know, you strengthen each other. We bounce off each other. When I see someone win a world title, it makes me want to win a world title. When I see someone do something and just really, really excel, it makes me want to excel. So obviously Daniel's fighting not aiming to be fighting Alexander Usyk. They've got to get that over the line. They've got to sign those papers and get everything completed. And it will be a great fight for boxing, a great fight for heavyweight boxing and a good, good fight for Daniel. Is it, you say everyone in the gym motivates each other, but is it different when it's family? Because you and Daniel have obviously been motivating each other since you were kids. Um, 100% it's different when it's family, you know. It's always good to see brothers and sisters achieve and do well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's obviously it's different when it's family. And just finally, out in Bournemouth, obviously in a couple of weeks' time, what do you think we can expect both from yourself and from the man in the ring now, Chris Billum-Smith? Um, for myself, more, more or less the same, I want to keep on proving, keep on showing you guys what I bring to the table so that when I do get to those big, big fights, you're calling for it, you're asking for it because you want to see me just go out there and perform and win. Um, for Chris, he's been an absolute monster in the gym these past few weeks. I'm sure if you ask him, he would say this is the best he's ever looked because this is definitely by far the best I've ever seen him. He's so sharp, so strong. He's been an absolute monster, so I expect nothing but good things from him. Obviously, it's a, it's a tough fight. It is a 50 50 fight, on paper at least. And um, he's got all, you know, all to win for. This is, this is it. This is his moment. And one thing I know about Chris is he performs well under pressure. Caroline, really appreciate your time. And yeah, best of luck at the end of the month.